Topic 2 Attitude Question 1 of 40 At a Pelican Crossing, what must you do when the amber light is flashing? Mark 1 Answer A. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing B. Give way to pedestrians waiting to cross C. Stop and wait for the green light D. Stop and wait for the red light The correct answer is a. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. Explanation. Pelican crossings are signal controlled crossings operated by pedestrians. Push button controls change the signals. Pelican crossings have no red and amber stage before green. Instead, they have a flashing amber light. This means you must give way to pedestrians who are already on the crossing. If the crossing is clear, however, you can continue. Question 2 of 40. Why should you never wave people across at pedestrian crossings? Mark 1 answer. A. Another vehicle may be coming. B. It's safer for you to carry on. C. They may not be looking. D. They may not be ready to cross. The correct answer is. A. Another vehicle may be coming. Explanation. If people are waiting to use a pedestrian crossing, slow down and be prepared to stop. Don't wave them across the road because another driver may not have seen them, may not have seen your signal, and may not be able to stop safely. Question 3 of 40. What does tailgating mean? Mark 1 answer. A. Driving with rear fog lights on. B. Following another vehicle too closely. C. Reversing into a parking space. D. Using the rear door of a hatchback car. The correct answer is B. Following another vehicle too closely. Explanation. Tailgating is the term used when a driver or rider follows the vehicle in front too closely. It's dangerous because it restricts their view of the road ahead and leaves no safety margin if the vehicle in front needs to slow down or stop suddenly. Tailgating is often the underlying cause of rear-end collisions or multiple pull-ups. Question 4 of 40. Why is it unwise to follow this vehicle too closely? Mark 1 answer. A. Your brakes will overheat. B. Your engine will overheat. C. Your view ahead will be increased. D. Your view ahead will be reduced. The correct answer is. B. Your view ahead will be reduced. Explanation. Staying back will increase your view of the road ahead. This will help you to see any hazards that might occur and give you more time to react. Question 5 of 40. What's the minimum time gap you should leave when following a vehicle on a wet road? Mark 1 answer. A. 4 seconds. B. 1 second. C. 3 seconds. B. 2 seconds. The correct answer is. A. 4 seconds. Explanation. Water will reduce your tire's grip on the road. The safe separation gap of at least 2 seconds in dry conditions should be doubled to at least 4 seconds. In wet weather. Question 6 of 40. A long, heavily laden lorry is taking a long time to overtake you. What should you do? Mark 1 answer. A. Change direction. B. Hold your speed. C. Slow down. D. Speed up. The correct answer is C. Slow down. Explanation. A long lorry with a heavy load will need more time to pass you than a car, especially on an uphill stretch of road. Slow down and allow the lorry to pass. Question 7 of 40. Which vehicle will use a blue flashing beacon? Mark 1 answer. A. Bomb disposal. B. Breakdown recovery. C. Motorway maintenance. D. Snow plow. The correct answer is. A. Bomb disposal. Explanation. Emergency vehicles use blue flashing lights. If you see or hear one, move out of its way as soon as it's safe and legal to do so. Question 8 of 40. You're being followed by an ambulance showing flashing blue lights. What should you do? Mark 1 answer. A. Accelerate hard to get away from it. B. Brake harshly and stop well out into the road. C. Maintain your speed and course. 
B. Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. The correct answer is B. Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. Explanation. Pull over in a place where the ambulance can pass safely. Check that there are no bollards or obstructions in the road that will prevent it from passing. Question 9 of 40. What type of emergency vehicle is fitted with a green flashing beacon? Mark 1 answer. A. Ambulance. B. Doctor's car. C. Fire engine. D. Road gritter. The correct answer is. B. Doctor's car. Explanation. A green flashing beacon on a vehicle means the driver or passenger is a doctor on an emergency call. Give way to them if it's safe to do so. Be aware that the vehicle may be traveling quickly or may stop in a hurry. Question 10 of 40. Who should obey diamond-shaped traffic signs? Mark 1 answer. A. Bus drivers. B. Lorry drivers. C. Taxi drivers. B. Tram drivers. The correct answer is. B. Tram drivers. Explanation. These signs apply only to tram drivers. But you should know their meaning so that you're aware of the priorities and are able to anticipate the actions of the driver. Question 11 of 40. On a road where trams operate. Which of these vehicles will be most at risk from the tram rails? Mark 1 answer. A. Buses B. Cars C. Cycles D. Lorries The correct answer is C. Cycles Explanation The narrow wheels of a bicycle can become stuck in the tram rails, causing the cyclist to stop suddenly, wobble or even lose balance altogether. The tram lines are also slippery, which could cause the cyclist to slide or fall off. Question 12 of 40 what should you use your horn for? Mark 1 answer. A. To alert others to your presence. B. To allow you right of way. C. To greet other road users. D. To signal your annoyance. The correct answer is. A. To alert others to your presence. Explanation. Your horn mustn't be used between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in a built-up area or when you're stationary, unless a moving vehicle poses a danger. Its function is to alert other road users to your presence. Question 13 of 40. You're in a one-way street and want to turn right. There are two lanes. Where should you position your vehicle? Mark 1 answer. A. In either lane, depending on the traffic. B. In the left-hand lane. C. In the right-hand lane. D. Just left of the center line. The correct answer is. C. In the right-hand lane. Explanation. When you're in a one-way street and want to turn right, you should take up a position in the right-hand lane. This will allow other road users, not wishing to turn, to pass on the left. Indicate your intention and take up the correct position in good time. Question 14 of 40. You wish to turn right ahead. Why should you take up the correct position in good time? Mark 1 answer. A. To allow drivers to pass you on the right. B. To allow other drivers to pull out in front of you. C. To give a better view into the road that you're joining. D. To help other road users know what you intend to do. The correct answer is. B. To help other road users know what you intend to do. Explanation. If you wish to turn right into a side road. Take up your position in good time. Move to the center of the road when it's safe to do so. This will allow vehicles to pass you on the left. Early planning will show other traffic what you intend to do. Question 15 of 40. At which type of crossing are cyclists allowed to ride across with pedestrians? Mark 1 answer. A. Pelican. B. Puffin. C. Toucan. D. Zebra. The correct answer is. C. Toucan. Explanation. A toucan crossing is designed to allow pedestrians and cyclists to cross at the same time. Look out for cyclists approaching the crossing at speed. Question 16 of 40. You're driving at the legal speed limit. A vehicle comes up quickly behind you, flashing its headlights. What should you do? 
Mark one answer. A. Accelerate to make a gap behind you. B. Allow the vehicle to overtake. C. Maintain your speed to prevent the vehicle from overtaking. D. Touch the brakes sharply to show your brake lights. The correct answer is B. Allow the vehicle to overtake. Explanation. Don't enforce the speed limit by blocking another vehicle's progress. This will only lead to the other driver becoming more frustrated. Allow the other vehicle to pass when you can do so safely. Question 17 of 40. When should you flash your headlights at other road users? Mark 1 answer. A. When letting them know that you're there. B. When showing that you're about to turn. C. When showing that you're giving way. D. When telling them that you have right of way. The correct answer is, A, when letting them know that you're there. Explanation. You should only flash your headlights to warn others of your presence. Don't use them to greet others, show impatience or give priority to other road users. Because they could misunderstand your signal. Question 18 of 40. You're approaching an unmarked crossroads. How should you deal with this type of junction? Mark 1 answer. A. Accelerate and keep to the middle. B. Accelerate and look to the left. C. Slow down and keep to the right. D. Slow down and look both ways. The correct answer is. B. Slow down and look both ways. Explanation. Be cautious, especially when your view is restricted by hedges, bushes, walls, large vehicles, etc. In the summer months these junctions can become more difficult to deal with. Because growing foliage may further obscure your view. Question 19 of 40. The conditions are good and dry. When should you use the two-second rule? Mark 1 answer. A. Before restarting the engine after it has stalled. B. Before using the mirror the signal, maneuver, routine. C. When checking your gap from the vehicle in front. D. When traffic lights change to green. The correct answer is. C. When checking your gap from the vehicle in front. Explanation. In good conditions, the two-second rule can be used to check the distance between your vehicle and the one in front. This technique works on roads carrying faster traffic. Choose a fixed object, such as a bridge, sign or tree. When the vehicle ahead passes this object, say to yourself, only a fool breaks the two-second rule. If you reach the object before you finish saying this, you're too close. Question 20 of 40. At a puffin crossing, which color follows the green signal? Mark 1 answer. A. Flashing amber. B. Flashing green. C. Steady amber. D. Steady red. The correct answer is. C. Steady amber. Explanation. Puffin crossings have infrared sensors that detect when pedestrians are crossing and hold the red traffic signal until the crossing is clear. The use of a sensor means there's no flashing amber phase as there is with a pelican crossing. Question 21 of 40. You're in a line of traffic. The driver behind you is following very closely. What action should you take? Mark 1 answer. A. Ignore the following driver and continue to travel within the speed limit. B. Move over to a position just left of the center line of the road. C. Signal left and wave the following driver past. D. Slow down, gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle in front. The correct answer is, D. Slow down, gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle in front. Explanation. If the driver behind is following too closely, there's a danger they'll collide with the back of your car if you stop suddenly. You can reduce this risk by slowing down and increasing the safety margin in front of you. This reduces the chance that you'll have to stop suddenly and allows you to spread your braking over a greater distance. This is an example of defensive driving. Question 22 of 40. You're driving on a clear night. 
There's a steady stream of oncoming traffic. The national speed limit applies. Which lights should you use? Mark one answer. A. Dipped headlights. B. Fog lights. C. Full beam headlights. D. Side lights. The correct answer is A. Dipped headlights. Explanation. Use the full beam headlights only when you can be sure that you won't dazzle other road users. Question 23 of 40. You're driving behind a large goods vehicle. What should you do if it signals left but steers to the right? Mark one answer. A. Drive on, keeping to the left. B. Hold your speed and sound your horn. C. Overtake on the right of it. D. Slow down and let the vehicle turn. The correct answer is B. Slow down and let the vehicle turn. Explanation. Large, long vehicles need extra room when making turns at junctions. They may move out to the right in order to make a left turn. Keep well back and don't attempt to pass them on their left. Question 24 of 40. You're driving along this road. The red van cuts in close in front of you. What should you do? Mark one answer. A. Accelerate to get closer to the red van. B. Drop back to leave the correct separation distance. C. Flash your headlights several times. D. Give a long blast on the horn. The correct answer is B. Drop back to leave the correct separation distance. Explanation. There are times when other drivers make incorrect or ill-judged decisions. Be tolerant and try not to retaliate or react aggressively. Always consider the safety of other road users, your passengers and yourself. Question 25 of 40. You're waiting in a traffic queue at night. How can you avoid dazzling drivers behind you? Mark one answer. A. Use the clutch with the accelerator. B. Use the footbrake only. C. Use the parking brake only. D. Use the parking brake with the footbrake. The correct answer is C. Use the parking brake only. Explanation. In queuing traffic, your brake lights can dazzle drivers behind you. If you apply your parking brake but you can take your foot off the footbrake. This will deactivate the brake lights. Question 26 of 40. You're driving in traffic at the speed limit for the road. What should you do if the driver behind is trying to overtake? Mark one answer. A. Accelerate to get away from the driver behind. B. Keep a steady course and allow the driver behind to overtake. C. Move closer to the car head, so the driver behind has no room to overtake. D. Wave the driver behind to overtake when it's safe. The correct answer is B. Keep a steady course and allow the driver behind to overtake. Explanation. Keep a steady course to give the driver behind an opportunity to overtake safely. If necessary, slow down. Reacting incorrectly to another driver's impatience can lead to danger. Question 27 of 40. There's a bus lane on your left. The signs show no times of operation. What does this mean? Mark one answer. A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. B. The lane is only in operation at peak times. C. The lane is only in operation in daylight hours. D. The lane isn't in operation. The correct answer is A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. Explanation. Bus lane signs show the vehicles allowed to use the lane and also its times of operation. Where no times are shown, the bus lane is in operation 24 hours a day. Question 28 of 40. What should you do when a person herding sheep asks you to stop? Mark one answer. A. Continue on but drive slowly. B. Ignore them as they have no authority. C. Stop and switch off your engine. D. Try to get past quickly. The correct answer is C. Stop and switch off your engine. Explanation. If someone in charge of animals asks you to stop, you should do so and switch off your engine. 
Animals are unpredictable and startle easily. They could turn and run into your path or into the path of another moving vehicle. Question 29 of 40. What should you do when you're overtaking a horse and rider? Mark one answer. A. Flash your headlights as a warning. B. Go past as quickly as possible. C. Go past slowly and carefully. D. Sound your horn as a warning. The correct answer is, C, go past slowly and carefully. Explanation. Horses can be startled by the sound of a car engine or the rush of air caused by a vehicle passing too closely. Keep well back and only pass when it's safe. Leave them plenty of room. You may have to use the other side of the road to go past safely. Question 30 of 40. You're approaching a zebra crossing. Pedestrians are waiting to cross. What should you do? Mark one answer. A. Give way to the elderly and infirm only. B. Slow down and prepare to stop. C. Use your headlights to indicate they can cross. D. Wave at them to cross the road. The correct answer is B. Slow down and prepare to stop. Explanation. As you approach a zebra crossing, look for pedestrians waiting to cross. Where you can see them, slow down and prepare to stop. Be especially careful of children and older people, who may have difficulty judging when it's safe to cross. Question 31 of 40. A vehicle pulls out in front of you at a junction. What should you do? Mark one answer. A. Accelerate past it immediately. B. Flash your headlights and drive up close behind. C. Slow down and be ready to stop. D. Swerve past it and sound your horn. The correct answer is C. Slow down and be ready to stop. Explanation. Try to be ready for the unexpected. Plan ahead and learn to anticipate hazards. You'll then give yourself more time to react to any problems that might occur. Be tolerant of other road users who don't behave correctly. Question 32 of 40. You're approaching a red light at a path in crossing. Pedestrians are on the crossing. When will the red light change? Mark one answer. A. When a driver from the opposite direction reaches the crossing. B. When the pedestrians have cleared the crossing. C. When the pedestrians push the button on the far side of the crossing. D. When you start to edge forward onto the crossing. The correct answer is B. When the pedestrians have cleared the crossing. Explanation. A sensor will automatically detect that the pedestrians have reached a safe position. Don't drive on until the green light shows and it's safe for you to do so. Question 33 of 40. Which instrument panel warning light would show that headlights are on full beam? Mark one answer, A, B, C, D. The correct answer is, A. Explanation. You should be aware of all the warning lights and visual aids on the vehicle you're driving. If you're driving a vehicle for the first time, you should familiarize yourself with all the controls, warning lights and visual aids before you set off. Question 34 of 40. In which conditions should you leave at least a two-second gap between your vehicle and the one in front? Mark one answer. A. Damp. B. Dry. C. Foggy. D. Wet. The correct answer. B. Dry. Explanation. In good dry conditions, a driver needs to keep a distance of at least two seconds from the car in front. This should allow enough space for you to stop if the driver in front has to stop suddenly. Question 35 of 40. You're driving at night on an unlit road following another vehicle. What should you do? Mark one answer. A. Flash your headlights. B. Switch off your headlights. C. Use dipped headlights. D. Use full beam headlights. The correct answer is. C. Use dipped headlights. Explanation. If you follow another vehicle with your headlights on full beam, they could dazzle the driver. Leave a safe distance and make sure that the light from your dip beam falls short of the vehicle in front. 
Question 36 of 40. You're driving a slow-moving vehicle on a narrow, winding road. What should you do? Mark one answer. A. Give a left signal when it's safe for vehicles to overtake you. B. Keep well out to stop vehicles overtaking dangerously. C. Pull in when you can. To let following vehicles overtake. D. Wave following vehicles past you if you think they can overtake quickly. The correct answer is. C. Pull in when you can. To let following vehicles overtake. Explanation. If you're driving a slow-moving vehicle along a narrow road, try not to hold up fast as traffic. If you see vehicles following behind, pull over in a safe place and let the traffic pass before continuing. Don't wave at the traffic pass. This could be dangerous if you or they haven't seen any hazard that's hidden from view. Question 37 of 40. What can a loose filler cap on your diesel fuel tank cause? Mark 1 answer. A. It can improve your vehicle's fuel consumption. B. It can increase the level of exhaust emissions. C. It can make the engine difficult to start. D. It can make the road slippery for other road users. The correct answer is. D. It can make the road slippery for other road users. Explanation. Diesel fuel can spill out if your filler cap isn't secured properly. This is most likely to occur on bends, junctions and roundabouts, where it will make the road slippery, especially if it's wet. At the end of the dry spell of weather, the road surfaces may have a high level of diesel spillage that haven't been washed away by rain. Question 38 of 40. After refueling your vehicle, what should you do to avoid spillage? Mark 1 answer. A. Check that you've used a locking filler cap. B. Check that your filler cap is securely fastened. C. Check that your fuel gauge is working. D. Check that your tank is only three quarters full. The correct answer is. B. Check that your filler cap is securely fastened. Explanation. When learning to drive, it's a good idea to practice filling your car with fuel. Ask your instructor if you can use a petrol station and fill the fuel tank yourself. You need to know where the filler cap is on the car you're driving, so you know which side of the pump to park it. Take care not to overfill the tank and make sure you secure the filler cap correctly, so that no fuel leaks onto the road while you're driving. Question 39 of 40. What style of driving causes increased risk to everyone? Mark 1 answer. A. Competitive. B. Considerate. C. Defensive. D. Responsible. The correct answer. A. Competitive. Explanation. Competitive driving increases the risks to everyone and is the opposite of responsible, considerate and defensive driving. Defensive driving is about questioning the actions of other road users and being prepared for the unexpected. Don't be taken by surprise. Question 40 of 40. Which road users are more vulnerable at night in built-up areas? A. Drivers of black taxi cabs. B. Drivers of double-deck vehicles. C. Cyclists. D. Ambulance drivers. The correct answer is. D. Cyclists. Explanation. Look out for cyclists who don't have lights on. Also be aware that pedestrians, especially those in dark clothing, may be difficult to see.